Karl Lagerfeld Alina Beauty is our most ambitious show to date, with approximately 180 garments from Lagerfeld's remarkable 65 year career as the creative director for multiple design houses, including Fendi, Chloe, Chanel, and his eponymous label. The exhibition is inspired by William Hogarth's concept, The Line of Beauty, an S-shaped curve line appearing within an object or as the boundary line of an object. For Hogarth, S-shaped serpentine lines represent his liveliness and movement in contrast to straight lines which signified stillness, inactivity and even death. Lagerfeld was much too magnanimous to hold such aesthetic judgments. For him, the straight line and the serpentine line were just as beautiful, exciting and engaging his imagination in equal measure. These two lines are physically and conceptually manifested in the exhibition, with the serpentine line representing Lagerfeld's historicist, romantic and decorative impulses, and the straight line signifying his modernist, classicist and minimalist tendencies. The exhibition focuses on Lagerfeld's practice of sketching, a critical aspect of his design process that made him unique among his peers. While other designers sketch as part of their creative process, Lagerfeld's sketches were a combination of a detailed technical drawing and an expressive fashion illustration. We've included a video of Lagerfeld drawing and the desk he used to sketch his designs. Sketching was not only Lagerfeld's primary mode of creative expression, but also his primary mode of communication. To the untrained eye, his sketches seemed spontaneous and expressionistic, but to the skilled eyes of his premiers, who were responsible for translating Lagerfeld's two-dimensional drawings into three-dimensional garments, they convey precise details and almost mathematical instructions. Adjacent to the introductory gallery is a room dedicated to the premieres at Fendi, Chloe, Chanel and Lagerfeld's eponymous label, with whom Lagerfeld had a long-established working relationship. In a series of interviews, they discuss how they decoded his encrypted drawings to transform them into finished pieces which are displayed in the gallery on dress forms. As you continue through the exhibition, each gallery explores the serpentine line and the straight line as dualities. Bridging these dualities are what we call explosions, garments that represent moments of convergence in which the competing aesthetics of these contrasting dichotomies are resolved and reconciled. For example, the garments in the Romantic line are shown embedded in a curved wall and those in the Military line are shown alongside a straight wall, or rather two straight walls with the garments arranged as a pyramid. The Romantic era, beginning in the late 1700s and lasting through the 1850s, was a constant source of inspiration for Lagerfeld, especially its idealization of nature, as reflected in fashions that celebrate a pastoral lifestyle. This pastoralism permeates the garments in the Romantic line, which prioritizes two revivalist silhouettes. The 1830s, with its distinctive gigot or leg and button sleeves, and the 1850s with its characteristic dome-shaped quinoline skirt. In Lagerfeld's imagination, the costumes of romantic heroines coexisted alongside the uniforms of military heroes, whose severity and sobriety stand in stark contrast to the sentimentality of romantic era fashions. As reflected in the garments in the military line, Lagerfeld's borrowings of war's fiery Raymond are more formal than symbolic, such as braids inspired by Hussar uniforms, tabs simulating the closures on 18th and early 19th century uniforms, and large pockets with scallop flaps referencing World War I uniforms. For Lagerfeld, the hand and the machine were creative rather than contrasting or contradictory tools in the production of fashion. This gallery shows how Lagerfeld strove to problematize the associative values that traditionally have been applied to the hand-machine dichotomy the hand signifying exclusivity, spontaneity and individuality, and the machine signifying inferiority, dehumanization and homogenization. This ensemble is entirely hand embroidered with tiny paillettes and sea bees that involved 700 hours of workmanship. For Lagerfeld, embroidery is not mere luxe augmentation, but capability intrinsic to the garment. The ensemble was part of Chanel's spring-summer 
2009 Haute Couture collection, which was an ode to paper, Lagerfeld's favourite material. Apart from the colour white, the papery quality of the ensemble can be seen in the crispness of the squared off shoulders and the symmetry of the A-line skirt with inverted V-shaped pleat, which is crafted with scissored precision. In this suit from Chanel's autumn-winter 2015 Haute Couture collection, Lagerfeld purposely challenged the cultural and symbolic meanings behind the hand machine dichotomy. Made by the Belgian company Materialize, the suit was created using selective laser sintering, a manufacturing technique that employs a laser to sinter a powdered material together one layer at a time to create a solid structure. The top, however, as well as the lining and braiding of the suit's pockets and perimeters, were embroidered by Maison Lesage, entailing almost 1,800 hours of handwork. This complex amalgam of hand and machine techniques results not only in unraveling the mythologies of the hand machine conundrum, but it also produces a garment of exceptional conceptual originality and technical ingenuity. One of Lagerfeld's most enduring and distinctive stylistic interests was the postmodern combination of the traditional proprieties of the couture and the transgressive provocations of the edgiest and wildest street styles. The garments in the canonical line and countercultural line represent the dueling stylistic forces behind this gleeful confrontation between the establishment and the anti-establishment, simultaneously asserting and enhancing their refined elegance. All the pieces in the canonical line were shown in the rarefied context of a salon, this ambience of privacy and exclusivity. Several incorporate trompe l'oeil details that reference Gabrielle Chanel's penchant for wearing real and artificial jewellery, which in its day was a radical challenge to accepted notions of good taste and bad taste. This ensemble from Chanel's Autumn Winter 1996 Haute Couture collection represents a different kind of simulation. The coat is made from black organza, applied with strips of silk, tulle, gathered, crocheted and dyed to resemble a mink fur coat, the erstwhile sartorial symbol of wealth and power. Lagerfeld's duplicity is calculated. His intention is to draw attention to the hidden value of the haute couture and to highlight the extraordinary workmanship of the metiers in service to the couture, in this case Maison Montex and the 250 hours spent on creating the illusion. The coat presaged Chanel's announcement in 2018 that it would stop using fur and exotic skins in its fashions and instead focus its research and development on textiles and leathers generated by agri-food industries. While the canonical line represents the trickle-across movement of fashions moving horizontally between individuals of similar social and economic standing, the countercultural line represents the trickle-up movement of fashion trends that start from the street and move upward into high fashion. Lagerfeld reveled in this reversal of fortune. This ensemble from Chanel's spring-summer 2011 collection was inspired by punks, and specifically the punk practice of deconstruction, expressed in torn, ripped and slashed clothes, which were visual symbols of disaffection, encapsulated in the punk clarion cry of no future. Lagerfeld's interest in punks' rips and tears, however, were for their decoration rather than for any political associations. The jacket is a tour de force of workmanship, with each laser-cut hole carefully positioned and finished to prevent fraying. In Lagerfeld's hands, the aesthetic of poverty has been transformed into the aesthetic of luxury. Lagerfeld's synthesis of the salon and the street, good taste and bad taste, high culture and low culture, is exemplified in this ensemble from Chanel's Autumn awesome Winter 1991 collection. Lagerfeld described the look as nouveau rapper, a reflection of his belief that modern dressing entailed a complete rethinking of the established standards. This gallery explores the duality between the ornamental line and the structural line. Lockerfeld was the consummate connoisseur. His collecting practices were as eclectic as his fashion inspirations. Lockerfeld's greatest affinity, however, was for the arts of the 18th century, especially for the style of Louis XV which he regarded as the epitome of elegance and restraint. This passion is evident in the garments in the ornamental line, inspired by a diverse range of 18th century decorative arts. The flowers that bloom on this 1950s style dress from Chanel's spring-summer 2019 Haute Couture collection were inspired by ceramic flowers produced by Vincennes, 
in the mid-18th century. Each flower petal is cut from foam or moulded in ceramic powder and then hand-painted and enamelled. In total, the dress entailed 1,650 hours of workmanship. In contrast to the Rococo flourishes of the ornamental line, the structural line reveals a modernist exactitude expressed through Lagerfeld's approach to tailoring. Featuring a series of suits and coats from his Chanel collections, they reveal a fundamental difference between the designer and the founder of the house. Whereas Gabrielle Chanel was chiefly interested in tailoring finishes, Lagerfeld was more concerned with tailoring construction. The garments also highlight two of the designer's anatomical obsessions, the shoulders and the side of the ribcage. This tweed suit is from Chanel's autumn-winter 2016 Haute Couture collection entitled Graphic Cuts, which was a study in angularity. The jacket's shoulders are extended and flattened into two dimensions without any internal padding, an effect achieved through a technique called buzoté. Lagerfeld held the strong opinion that fashion was not art and that fashion designers were not artists. For Lagerfeld, fashion was intensely practical and irrevocably commercial. But despite being sceptical of the confluence between art and fashion, he often looked to fine art for both inspiration and information, as the figurative line and the abstract line demonstrates. Lagerfeld's figurative tendencies were most fully expressed in his designs for Chloe and Fendi, the latter manifested in his autumn-winter 2016 Haute Couture collection, which was inspired by K. Nielsen's illustrations for the 1914 book East of the Sun and West of the Moon. This dress from the collection is titled Lassie and the Prince and features an image that references one of Nielsen's drawings for the story The Lassie and Her Godmother and was created by the British illustrator K. Bailey, especially for the collection. The image is both printed and hand-painted on silk gazar to reflect the fine lines, delicate colours and tonal variety of Nielsen's original artwork, which incorporates the influences of Art Nouveau filtered through a chilly Nordic modernism. This ensemble from Chloe's spring-summer 1971 collection was hand-painted by Nicole Lafort and was inspired by Sonia Delaunay's rhythm and colour paintings, which express her concept of simultaneism, a mode of art that rejects the representation of figures in favour of the simultaneous contrast of colours. The exhibition concludes with the satirical line, which consists of two parts. The first includes garments that reflect Lagerfeld's razor-sharp wit, and the second features ensembles that mirror Lagerfeld's self-presentation through various representations of his iconic black-and-white uniform. In this dress from the autumn-winter 1985 collection of Lagerfeld's eponymous label, the embroidered candlestick becomes a surrogate for a woman's body, speaking of metaphor and metamorphosis. It also invokes the somnambulant world of surrealism, suggesting nocturnal reverie and the transition from day to night, from the real to the imagined, and from the conscious to the subconscious. Lagerfeld arrived at his black-and-white uniform after years and years of self-study. As with Gabrielle Chanel, he looked to the dandy for his self-styling. Lagerfeld's globally recognized uniform was a cloak of invisibility, making it possible for him to hide in plain sight and pass incognito on the world stage. To deepen this deceit, Lagerfeld deliberately lent himself to caricature. Channeling Andy Warhol, another dandy, Lagerfeld presented this caricature as a commercial experiment through various representations of his black and white look primarily in collections for Chanel and his eponymous label. The apogee of this Warholian experiment was his 2004 collaboration with the high street chain H&M. This ensemble from the H&M collaboration includes the cornerstone of the collection, a white t-shirt printed with a graphic representation of Lagerfeld's face and shoulders, signed by the designer, fulfilling his infamous comment, I am a living label, my name is Labelfeld, not Lagerfeld. This echo chamber shows footage from Loic Prejant, documenting an impromptu moment from 2011 when Lagerfeld was filming a special feature for the French-German television channel Arte. The footage shows Lagerfeld dissolving into laughter as he confuses his French, English and his native German. 
The space reveals the centrality of his iPhone to his creative process and presents his epigrams or carlisms in a dynamic installation conceived by the British director Bailey Walsh, granting Lagerfeld the final word. The exhibition ends with the collage of Lagerfeld's dandiacal black and white uniform, which was paradoxical in its modernist and historicist aesthetics. Adjacent to this collage is a video of Lagerfeld drawing himself, beginning with the lederhosen he wore as a child and ending with the Carlito charm from Fendi's Autumn Winter 2014 collection, which represented Lagerfeld as a dolly or puppet, reduced to the elements of collar, tie, sunglasses and ponytail.